Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Kusha uh, Dawara Parlamit Kangarka, the Lawuta Gray, Wa Ibelinta, Haga Aitiga, Kusha Dawara Somalia, Wa Parlamit Tahana, or Bihidon Manuel Borojama, Makasa Adel Tahit of the UK time, Ama Sagarka Fidimo, Rotiga East African time. Habarasi at the Manish Kalu Faridisato, for Nan Kubatso, Mana Kalamakara, in Manuel Borojama, the Dora Fidimo, for Namishka and Rasa Kushin. Manta Bernamish from Hamatun Yogoa, in general Abdelman Abdullah. ونتي إن مدة كسر شقية أي تيجا كسر شقية شركة الدول ودون كدافين ساعة ما تحل كان جو جسي وقيد وضم غلوب برنامج كان سجاء هذا بقى وحنقول رجيم دونا إن شاء الله تعالى من جنر عبد الرحمن سو برنامج كأبلاغ فرنا محل فعلتنا يا بنانتي إلى دقيقة تان ونود أقارب تان أم لك في دقيقة تان حاجة بنبا مركو بنا يا برنامج كا أيام حصل من دونا إسبيشال سيشن أم سيشن جوليا or who have some uh, QA and questions and answers. And had this all up to for the CD also, and then CD go, had the Uber Hunter High in a so good software, had some anchor that also would be a child box car, see that car, a Bernanke that the Hilaya, a Telka, a Suasha, then who see the gun, had on the road with the Makta Suala Hakate and the Long and Shalla Tada. We have already done a general Brahman, or Hanka Kapla with the Bernanke Samantha. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, um, welcome, everybody. Um, before we start, inshallah, a um, couple of disclaimers or, you know, the mean. Um, first, as you can tell, I don't speak in public um, often, so um, I'm a little bit nervous, so you have to be bear with me. Secondly, um, we're going to try and present the presentation on in, in English. Um, I think that's something, you know, um, if some people are connecting from a, you know, non-English speaking people on the call, um, I can always answer the question in Somali, um, or we can always answer or answer the in Somali, inshallah. Um, since we're talking about technical um, presentation, I think it makes sense to do it in English simply because, you know, everything you do is going to be um, um, explained in English. So that's what we're going to do. Um, thirdly, um, everything I talk about here is on my own personal experience. Um, there's, in IT, there's so many ways to do things and so many ways to um, a, a present a topic or talk about a particular topic. So it's my personal experience. So, um, you know, that's what it is. As the Ma'alim mentioned, uh, my name is Abdurrahman Abdili. Um, I'm a senior system engineer. That's my current job title. Uh, I work for a company called Zynga. They do mobile um, gaming, um, large global business. Um, I, those of you interested, that's my picture. Um, okay, so just a little bit about me. Um, I've been in IT for about 10 years um, um, in various different roles from service desk to architect to system engineering infrastructure. Um, Lot, done a lot of different projects, a lot of different areas. I've mainly worked in media publishing. Um, there's not so much of a publishing left these days. Um, fintech. Um, those of you who don't know what fintech is, the fintech is financial technology. So businesses that are technology company, but they deal with financial product. Gaming is where I am at the moment, or technology. I am a um, ex government student. Sorry, I've. <laughs> I missed it probably the most important bit. Um, I was, um, I've done three courses back in 2009. Um, I've done XP, those of you know what XP is. Um, I've done server 2003, I think. Um, and I've done exchange. Um, at that time I was second year at university. Um, those of you who remember, at the time we were in a really bad financial um, meltdown in 2009, um, and I was supposed to go on and accept. I was about to start a one-year placement as a junior um, web developer, I think it was at the time, um, in a financial institution. Two weeks before I, two weeks before I started, they. You know, the, the, the financial meltdown happened. 
um, they decided not to take any more student. Um, so that brought me into a BMR predicament. So I went out in the market and worked one year uh, non IT job. Um, while I was doing that, I come across my own Abdenla and Global Net. Um, initially, just, uh, someone told me, okay, the, um, you know, there's a Somali person that's doing a, a training in, in Whitechapel. Um, I thought I'll just go and have a look at it. Um, I have I had a very little. I have to be honest. I had a very low expectation of what what might be happening. Um, I sat down with Marlin and I just had a uh, conversation with him, and we were like, "Okay, what do you want to do?" And it, there, within ten minutes, he kind of gave me a a roadmap of um, you know what he thinks I should do. Um, and I was, I was really, really impressed straight away. Um, the, you know, the professionalism he showed, the knowledge in depth that he showed. I've never actually met until that point a Somali person that works in IT. And I've never really had anybody that's, you know, sat down with me and spoke to me about or speak to me about what I should be doing and how I should be approached. And so that was an eye opening for me. Um, about seven months that I've been in the school, I was coming every Saturday. Or I think one day in midweek, I get to know um, four or five brothers I still, until this day, 10 years later, still talk to through the school. Um, um, I met my peers, people that work with one, my brothers that work in IT. Um, so it, it's been, a, it, was a, um, it was an unbelievable experience for me in terms of, you know, actually seeing other people in in my community in my area that actually do this and this for a living uh, so it was a bit of a uh, you know confident boost for me um alhamdulillah straight away once i finished the university in 2010 i i got an i i got a job in it and i genuinely genuinely believe and i'm not just saying it because you know we're, we're a we're in a platform that's organized by global net um I genuinely wouldn't I wouldn't get a job at the time when there was very little job going around. Uh, if if I haven't took the initiative to go and study for technical technical courses and you know the the the, the prices that we were paying at the time were probably a fraction of what you pay in the market. Um, and Marlin tells me just the other day the, the the pricing is still the same. Ten years later, nothing stayed in. You know, it's it's, it's, it's amazing. So that's enough um, with with global net. Um, some of the, I'm just going to quickly go through, inshallah, if time allows us to, some of the um, technology stack that I currently manage. Some of them are, you would probably see is not a technology, but it's just a sort of stuff I do. Um, so currently, I manage or look after or responsible for the firmware platform or firmware infrastructure. HCI, which is in this case Nutanix, those of you who don't know what HCI is, is a hyper-converged infrastructure. I will explain this in, in our presentation, inshallah. Storage core, core services, i.e. SQL, domain controllers, data center. Um, the reason I put a colo there, colo stands for a co-location, um, and the reason I put there is um, I'm going to be talking about it quite a bit on here, um, just so people understand and I give you a little bit context. Um, we have a large uh, regional offices or global offices that have a quite substantial infrastructure on sites um, because obviously games are developed uh, places like India, um, you know, Ireland, those kind of places. Um, change management, that's as if you're adding anything to the system or removing or any new product is going into the system. Business applications or business systems, anything that the business use in terms of application, whether that's as emails or whether that's as a spoke system, whether it is um, SSO, whatever that might be. Public cloud, public cloud and platforms, things like Office 365, Business continuity. What that means is um, backup or high or, or HA. Um, so that's the sort of core areas that I currently manage. Um, a 
okay, what does that mean? What do I do day to day basis? And probably some of you are asking. Um, just, just a quick offer for you, I'm part of a global infrastructure team, mainly managing infrastructure in North America and uh, Europe. I would say about 70% of what I do is project work, about 30% of is the rest I have there, um, about 10% of that being an architect. Um, be of implementation and engineering, uh, some people might think that's the same thing, but in my view, there's a slight difference. Um, and then be of a BAU support, um, business as usual, um, support and escalation from our various, we have two, three different junior teams. Um, when I mean junior is like things, people like front, frontline support, game support, all that kind of stuff. Okay, well, inshallah, no, that's enough. Um, um, that's just a little background of who I am and what I do, um, what I'm currently doing. I won't be spending much of the time on, um, you know, what I've done in the past because it's a public knowledge. Anyone can check my um, LinkedIn profile and see that. Um, if we go into our presentation today, inshallah, um, I'll, I'll talk about a little bit why IT. Um, if you are new to IT and you, or you're a student and you're trying to get into IT, um, what to study? I mean, I mean, there's so many things that you can cover on global net. Inshallah, I'll talk about a little bit of what what courses you should do if you're a junior and you're just coming into into the market or you're just trying to transition from another sector or another role to to IT. Um, and once you do a course, once you have a bit of a knowledge, how do you get an IT? Again, I probably will leave this to the brothers that have a bit more experience of hiring, um, you know, techs, I Murad, um, to, to, to talk about this further. Um, but I will just give it, I, I at the moment, I get involved a lot of hiring, um, especially my last role, not the current one. Um, I used to get involved a lot of interviews and stuff. So I kind of know what to look for and in, in, in a good um, tech or good engineer. Um, and then hopefully once you once you studied a bit of IT and you, you, you got a job, um, how do you stay in IT? Because there's no good getting into a job and four months later um, you, you've been let go or you're not good enough to continue because you didn't know how to progress, you didn't know how to do particular st um, areas or your behavior or technical ability or whatever it might be. So this is just a little bit, exp um, inshallah, I will try and give you guys on, on the call a little bit insight into the market and a little bit insight to what actually happens when you're in a job. Um, and then I will do a little bit career advice in terms of do's and don'ts, um, you know, things that you shouldn't really do. Um, and this is just could be applied to things that, you know, necessarily not just ITs, um, but, you know, it can apply to any job. Um, and then we as Mahalan mentioned, inshallah, if time allows us, we will take questions. Okay, so let's go into, so before we go any further, I'm going to play or show you a little scenario or a little sort of illustration of how technology is changing and how fast things move in technology. Um, and I'll just, so, so why IT? Um, Murad talked about this just um, last Friday, sorry. And he said, um, if your IT is not your thing, but you're particularly like a particular uh, subject, you could probably use IT to get into that industry. Um, I go further and say you need to be in IT because IT is the future and present as well. Um, but I'll give you a little um, sort of a scenario, case study sort of thing. Um, so five years ago, I got promoted to, to join our internal infrastructure team. Um, and I'm just going to give you a little illustration of what happened. Um, so the team I joined at the time, they were consist of this amount of people. So I think that's what, nine, and we had two managers and a two project managers. So this is a nine technical people. This is the highest technical um, team in the organization. So I was the last person that you can see, I was just covering, I was a junior person that was covering on, on, on all, all areas. Um, it will come apparent in a minute why I'm showing you this. Um, so nine people just have that in mind. 
today how many people in that team three okay so you you might ask um you might ask what's happened and in fact if you're trying to get into it you might be worried you might say well two people are doing and um, three people are doing nine people's um job so I, there won't be enough space for me um so let's cover the why first so a lot of things happened in the last five years one of them at the time not only just the business i was at or the organization i was at, at the time uh, most p companies were using virtualization whether that was the firmware citrix um hyperfi whatever it might be that is not long enough just having a virtualization alone is not enough why because companies are using a smaller infrastructure footprint what that means instead of having 10 racks or 15 racks or whatever it might be they now have two or three thanks to hci which is hyper converged infrastructure uh, things like nutanix uh, are hyper converged infrastructure what that means is that you have all your storage all your network all your compute in one box so in a instead of having 10 servers and 10 storage devices to manage the servers and 10 fear and 10 and, and then you have in a top of track switch and so on and so forth you have the whole thing in one box and then obviously the you know the 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 cloud public cloud that we all come to know and all cus custom to i aws azure um Google, um, Google, whatever it might be, Alibaba, whatever, wh whatever it might be. Um, there's more and more, or there's a diminishing SME. Um, those of you who don't know what SME is, is subject matter expert. So it's someone who just deals with one particular role. So there's a less, less and less of those uh, and, a and a specialized role. 10 years ago, an organization on our, our size will have um, exchange or mail server specialist they will have two three specialist network guys they will have a backup person they will have sql person all of those i do it just me and one other guy um so you might be thinking okay then there's a less jobs out there there isn't and i'll come to that um why why is it there's a there's a why is that the infrastructure is getting smaller and smaller because the prevalence or the common use of public cloud um, and platforms i office 365 we use office 365 um, office 365 just replaced the exchange that you used to have or ml server ease of third party application integration what that means businesses might be used instead of having instead of buying a license a perpetual license they can subscribe to a a platform or, or service or software on, on in the cloud and they can just ask the IT guys to wrap around uh, the security the SSO which basically is the, you know option to allow you to log in with your with your corporate credentials or corporate logins so there is a more and more of that um, and then there's automations um, again five years ago if we had to do 10 user accounts in our system it probably will take seven days to just to turn around how many how many groups they need to be a member of how many applications they need to have access to how many systems they need to have all of that is done in, uh, what's called a workflow at the moment a script so it's everything is automated so within 24 hours of you creating a let's say Marlon Abdullah's account he will have almost every application that in the system and we manage something like you know almost 50 applications or systems every application that he can have access to um, all his logins will done all his um, ticket will be raised and logged with various different teams i hr will be asked to do certain things it will ask to do something facilities will be asked so in one particular in one script you can you can literally do the whole um, footprint or the whole um, workflow in one um, automated script. There is some, there's a more and more non-technical people involved IT. Okay, how? Um, because they, you have a project managers, you have business, business relationship managers, you have business, business analysis, you have procurement, you have so you're getting a team of 
10 people, maybe three of them are technical and the rest are either manager or project manager or what this shows you is if you're sitting in this call and you're and fixing problems and dealing with technical IT, it's not for you. There is another route. There's another way to get into And Brother Murad talked about this um, 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 last week. And there is a definitely role for a non-technical people to still be in an IT industry or in an IT field. Okay, so now we talked about um, what is changing and why everything is being in one box. You might ask, well, does that mean I have to learn networking, compute, storage, and other? In, 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 in essence, computers or technical IT, it's just all fit. They, they come in three areas. Everything else falls in, in and around that area. So it's a compute, which is basically processing and memory and that kind of stuff. And then there's storage where you keep stuff. And then there's a network which basically allows things to communicate. You might say, um, oh, what about things like SQL and all that kind of stuff? They all, they all still come in one way or another. They all still come around those three areas. So do I need to learn everything? Answer, no. Emphatic, no. Simply because nobody can learn everything about IT. It's an ocean. Um, I don't know 10% of what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, the fundamentals do not change. So we already talked about fundamentals of, uh, of computing, just being storage, networking, and, 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 and storage. Uh, those don't change. So it doesn't matter if you were dealing with IT um, 30 years ago or 25 years ago when my lad Dunlo was junior um, or now. The, the fundamentals are still the same. It's the same way the computers, they operate exactly the same. Just the application or the system or the compute power is slightly different. That's all it is. So what do, I, what do you need to do then now that you don't need to learn everything? You just need to build a solid foundation. What that means is if you're someone who in this call or, or you're listening to this later and you're thinking, oh, what do I need to get a job in IT? You just need to make sure you have enough basic skills to get yourself through the door. Once you do that, inshallah, that then will, 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 you know, will allow you to organically grow within the industry. Um, specialize later, um, if possible. Um, sometimes you run into or sometimes you get opportunity to become a junior network guy. So straight away, you're you're boxed in to be a network guy or network girl or you, you network engineer. Specialize, specialize it later if, um, if possible. Um, simply this will allow you to, um, this will allow you to have the opportunity to learn other areas. And even if you specialize it later, then it will, it will be beneficial for you. We talked about um, that you don't need to study. Um, and you might ask, what do I need to study then? Again, I'm going to leave this to Ma'al and Abdullah and, and the people that are more experienced than I am in this area to talk about. But this is what I think anyway, since I'm doing the presentation. I would say anyone that's on the call and they, they, um, they're interested in you know, getting involved in IT or trying to get a job in IT, try and do all the entry-level course, whether that's a server, A+, Network+, um, whatever it might be. Ma'al will tell you exactly what they have and when, what's happening when. Um, so trying to do the basic um, stuff, just cover your basic first. And then from there, if you need to specialize, whether you need to go to directly to the cloud um, or whatever you need to do, you can just navigate it from there. Um, I generally say to people, um, don't, don't sort of tie yourself into a one particular area until you have a couple of years experience. Um, focus of what you're good at or what you like. Um, this might not be obvious when you're junior or when you don't have much of a skill set or much of experience, but just think of what you would like to do. Um, and then just talk to the Ma'alin or the other student. I'm sure he can put you in touch with someone who's in IT because he has he's got the biggest contact, biggest Somali IT uh, professional contact you could ever find. If I need something, I'll just call him. Um, I don't think there's anybody on the planet, and that's not exaggeration, that has more contacts in IT than my Abdullah. Um, I, I just don't think there is one. Um, so if if you have a particular area that you want to get into and you need some sort of advice or help, 
just talk to uh, Marlin and, and then he will put you in touch with someone who is in that area. Okay, so I've already covered this, um, the second part anyway. Um, so get some experience if it's possible. There's, there's never, there's, there's no really, there's no substitute for experience or real life experience. Uh, do your basics, cover your basics, but try and get some experience. Um, when I say experience, everything means you, you just do a summer. If you're a student, you do a summer placement or something on that line. Because when you're at a job, the biggest issue is not a technical problem. Oh, for me, anyway, it's what, around, what comes around, you know, the people, the organization, the uh, policies and procedures. Uh, individuals that you're dealing with so that will give experiences is key obviously you can't get experience if you don't find a job first so trying your best to get some uh, real life experience if, uh, if if it's possible it's not always possible um, talk to um, global the next students ask questions ask questions it's never you can never ask enough questions um, when you're studying and when you're trying to get to IT and, and even in your first couple of years in junior IT um, you you need a little bit of sacrifice and what I mean by that you might be working already um, and you're studying you the fact that you're already here and you're studying with global net you're doing a bit of a sacrifice anyway so you might you might need to um, study late in the night and go to work in the next morning. You might have to um, suffer a little bit financially and take a job that pays less, whatever it might be. Um, just just bear in mind you're in there for the long haul. If you're a, if you're if you're getting into IT, this industry is not going anywhere. It's just going to grow and grow and grow, and you're going to grow with it, and you will earn. Um, eventually, it will pay off. So. What I mean by that, just be a little bit persistent, a little bit um, see it through. Because I'm telling you now, if, especially if you're getting yourself in in a, in a like help desk or, sis, or or service desk, it's not pretty. First couple of years, you know, it, it's tough. It's tough. You know, you're gonna deal with a lot of. Um, you really can't afford to react to it. And we're gonna come. To, we're gonna come and talk. We're gonna talk about it a little later, inshallah. Um, so a little bit of sacrifice is always needed, uh, no matter what you do, whether you work in IT or any other field. Always have a long-term, short-term and long-term plan. What I mean by that, if you're, in, if you're working in a different industry completely now um, and you want to sort of um, transition into IT, just think of a long-term game. Just do a bit by bit. Do the courses first. Get out of the way. Do your CV properly. Start applying for jobs. And then you still, and still don't let you go, let go to other job. Just make sure you take it nice and slowly in terms of um, planning your route into IT. Um, don't rush into anything. Um, if you're not sure what you're good at or what to do, um, use uh, uh, Brother Mirad's um, Swiss Army Knife um, analogy. Um, those of you who wasn't on a call last week or not not sure what that means. It's just a just another way of saying um, do enough, learn enough subject to have a basic knowledge, so you can do a lot of stuff, but not a good at anything in particular. So the tool allows you to do various different jobs, but not very good at any of them. So that is really good analogy, and you know I'm sure he doesn't mind me using that. So since we took, so this was all about uh, someone who's just trying to get into IT and, and they, they, they need a bit of um, advice, what to do, what to study. But the, Marlin tells me there's quite a few people that either already in IT or they just about start or they started recently. Um, so I just thought I just covered that slightly as well, right? So once you're in IT and once you're working in a job, what should you do to progress to the next level? And this is a few points that I think will help you um, well, this is why I've done to progress in, in my career and I get promoted a few times in my role, the various different places I've been. Um, so master your current role. What that means is if you're excelling or if you're excellent of what you do, um, people will notice you. You know, it's as simple as that. You know, there's nothing, there's nothing else I can really add to that. So just always make sure that you're, you're the best that you can be at what you do. 
um, get mentor, um, whether that, that's within your business or outside your business. Um, it's really important and uh, something that our community was lacking. And I think there's going to be more and more of this and people like Malin Abdullah are really um, forefront of that. Um, and hopefully myself and others that have done this presentation, Brother Abdullah, um, who's done a couple of weeks, Abdullah, I think was. Those, those, those of us who just doing this kind of stuff, I think there's a long way to go, but we're, I'm sure we, we, we're starting and we're getting there. Uh, gain a mentorship or, or have it as someone it's not necessarily in your field but someone that you can talk to because believe me when you go into a global business and there's a you know 30 25 people in your team um, the managers only have a you know fraction of the time that he you know he can dedicate to his team um, there's a lot going on I and mean, if you're not if you don't have that strong foundation if you're someone who probably don't know nobody in his family or friends that have work in IT, you're going to struggle. Um, and I, some, this is something I I only came to know recently that I had a good mentor. I really didn't think um, until probably I started doing these presentations a couple of, um, couple of um, days ago that I came to know a guy that was my, not the current role I have, but in a couple of years ago, I had a manager who really believed in me and, and you know took me under his wing and he he really 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 not helped because you can't help someone if they don't help themselves but just to just to guide me through some of the um you know the the challenges that i faced so always get a mentor if it's possible not always possible if you don't know anybody that works in it again talk to the marlin talk to me talk to any of the brothers that have done the presentation i'm sure they will they either can point you in the right direction or they can um, or, or they can help. Um, learn your technology stack. Uh, what I mean is learn everything about your business, whatever technology stack they use. Um, why is this important? Because one day something will go wrong um, and you're seeing the, the guy that deals with that particular technology stack it's not, or the girl that deals with that technology stack is not there. Um, everybody start looking around. You raise your hand and say, oh, I know how to solve this problem. And if you do that, it really goes a long way. And believe me, I've done it quite a few times where um, I just learned that something it was none of my sort of business um, and people were like, how do you know that? Um, so it really helps if you go outside of what you what your current role is and you learn other technology within your, um, within your organization because it's just a matter of time before someone notice your knowledge. Seek honest, um, honest feedback. Um, little caveat don't ask your best friend at work um, because that's not going to do any good for you it's not um, what I mean by um, seek honest feedback is constantly talk to your manager constantly talk to um, your CD engineers so when I was in sort of second line support role about six years back there was a one guy um, that I, I know I, I knew him very well personally um, and he was in the team that I wanted to get into. I spent, I deliberately befriend him. <laughs> so I, I used to just tell him, oh, let's go for coffee. He just, you know, you know, let's, um, let's change, let's have, let's do this, let's, like, you know. And once I get to know him well, I'll just ask him question after question. And I'll be like, okay, how do you do this? If this problem arises, how do you, how do you deal with this? So always seek feedback, always, uh, always ask, um, people in the, your position and I look at it as someone in your organization that you would like to take their job and go after it. Always focus on personal development. Um, this is so important. I've already shown you, I hope this makes sense now, why I showed you the analogy of five years uh, difference in, in a team. So if you don't stay top of um, what's going on in the market, um, what technology stack you need to learn and no job in the world will allow you to learn everything at the job. So you'll have to go outside, learn your own time, weekends, after work, whatever it might be. Um, there's so many um, material out there, but we're very, very lucky. Those, those of us are in this call, um, we have Global Net. You know, you can refer back to it uh, to see what Ma'an is doing. Even now, I've been talking to him. I wanted to do some courses um, after the lockdown, inshallah. Um, so always focus on 
you know to personal development but that don't just allow it just to be your work just make sure you you, you do enough outside um, this is again a topic that's been covered um, last week so again I won't spend too much on it but just a little bit few points of my personal experience and what I think could help someone firstly I will always say apply as many oh that's supposed to say as many apologies I put sp spelling mistake there um, <laughs> Um, as many as possible jobs. Um, it's just a lot of averages. If you apply fifty jobs, you will um, you will get one. You know, someone will get back to you. Um, so always apply as many as possible that you can. Just just apply. This it, it costs nothing. Just make keep a track of where you're applying, and just 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 keep doing it until you find something. Recruiters. So when recruit when recruiters call you, um, most jobs are managed by recruiters, whether they're internal. Or external um, so just talk to recruiters get as much as uh, feedback and about the role um, that you can ask questions so they can ask um, the hiring manager and they can get you some information so it's, it's use it as a, um, a learning um, exercise so if the time you talk to recruiter a particular role just see what the, that business is looking for what they're looking for it gives you a little bit inside of what's actually happening in the industry so because they know it, they they deal this with it. they deal with this every day. Um, seek feedback. Um, this is slightly too different. It's slightly different to what I was talking about earlier. So, when someone when you are in front of someone and they interview you, um, ask for feedback always, um, even afterwards. Um, just always say, make it clear that you know you you're after the feedback even if you don't get the job. Ask for alternative roles. What that means is. If someone's calling you for an interview, they have already, there's elements of, there's something about your CV or something about your personality that they like. Companies are looking for good people, um, not necessarily technical. They can always train you for the technical and that kind of stuff, but they can't train a good, you know, you can't change, you can't train for personality. You can't ch train for a, someone's attitude, so you can't change that. So always ask, is always make it uh, clear that, even if you're not successful in that particular role, um, you're happy to accept the alternative role. Be careful how you word this because that sh some people might see as a, um, a lack of confidence that you don't think you're going to get the job and you're just winging it. That's not. Make sure it doesn't come across that way. Attitude and personality of skills for entry level roles. So I sometimes ask um, to do the technical interview with our entry level. Um, not my current job, the, the, the previous companies I was at. Um, so they really care more about attitude and personality than the current skills. Because when you're tuning your role, you're always going to learn. If you have the att correct attitude or personality, you know, you're always going to learn the technical skills because, you know, anyone that's got the willingness to, to do something, they, they, they can do it with the last permission. So always have a good personality, you know, come crop, you know, trying to, you know, trying to show a good attitude, trying to show that you care, that you want to. Um, this is one I really do. I've been a lot of interviews, a lot of interviews. This is one thing I always do. I study the keywords in the job description. What that means is if they say, oh, we need someone who can do, someone, a junior IT guy or uh, person that can do, to, live, to build the laptops, for instance. The next keyword I'm looking in that job description is what do they use to build the laptops? I, SCCM, Champ for Apple Mac or, or Windows for SCCM or whatever it might be or Intune or whatever, you know, Autopilot, whatever it might be. So what I'm going to do is the day before the interview, I'm going to look every keyword in that job description and I'm going to study inside out. This is my B the difference between answering a technical question and not being able to answer it. If you take something away from this today, it should be that. I've always, always, I've cross-checked this with few other tech that I know. It's always important that you study individually, not just a generic um, uh, job um, descriptions that you've seen at quite a few places. If you're going to company X, you look at the what they're asking in the job description and then you study that. Tomorrow, you explain the same role, but it's a different company, you study again. So you don't use the same, um, obviously some technology will be the same, but always try 
and study keywords and on the job description. Um, just a little bit of fun since I've been talking for. Um, what I'm getting at here is um, people don't really, you don't have to be a technical genius to get a job in IT. In fact, not a lot of people are. Uh, you just need to know enough just to get the job done, just to start. You just need to be better at Googling than the other guy next to you. Uh, just or the next person that's going to be interviewed because they're not going to interview one person. So bear that in mind. Your personality, your attitude, um, is always, it's always, always very, very, very valuable in interview um, because they can teach you how to do a certain particular or particular task. So hopefully by now you can see the structure and how we're doing this. Um, in, we started with what I've done. We went on to um, um, how is IT is changing, and then should you be worried? No. What should you do? Um, once you've done a bit of a, um, once you study a bit of IT and you have a bit of a knowledge, you should um, go and apply for jobs. Um, hopefully, you'll get back some interviews, and here's some questions you should ask at the interviews. So this is when you're at the interview and you someone will ask you the end, at the end of the interview uh, do you have any questions for us if you say no just know that you're not going to get a job because they want to know what you're like they want to see how far you're thinking ahead um, just answering the technical questions or they them liking your personal your person your personality is not enough you need to ask questions and you need to have a two or three scenario in your head that you can ask if interview and some of the stuff that you can ask on, on here, uh, what do you expect from a team member in this position? So what, what you're doing there is you're tr trying to assess out what the expectation for this role is. And if they give you an answer and you probably haven't answered well in the questions, trying to go back to you and say, you know, I will do this, I will do this, I'm kind of, I'm this kind of person. If they tell you, oh, we need a, someone who can work with the business, who can, you know, have a good, you know, good relationship with, the, build a good relationship with the business and doesn't alienate everybody. Um, then you say, okay, um, I'm always dealt with, you know, challenging situations and you can just give them some scenarios in around this. So this is really important. Um, by the way, I copied this from online. So, uh, I mean, it's nothing I, um, it's nothing that I made up. It's, it's just, it's just a common questions that people do. Um, what's a typical day like at company X? always mention the company because make sure you pay attention to that because i've been to i've um, because we are a a brand under a, a, a bigger umbrella company so amount of time someone came to interview um and they just got completely named wrong um, and they called us something else that we're not why is that important it just shows a lack of focus it just shows that you're not prepared it just shows that you you're not being paying attention um, so just make sure you mention the company, whatever it might be. Um, what are some of your favorite things about working here? Um, remember, um, working in a company or working in IT or any other role is a two-way street. Um, you're they looking at you as a person, what you can do for them, same way um, that you're looking at that, what they can do for you. Um, you're just because they're offering you a role doesn't mean you're going to. Um, take their offer. You might have a couple options. Um, in fact, once you once you have a few more ex a few years experience, it's very 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 common that you have two three options available to choose from. Um, I was alhamdulillah I was in that position um, before I joined this company um, to have a couple options, and and I'm sure of the brothers and sisters that are on the call that are working in this field can tell you the same. You will always find another job, whether that's the right job for you or not. It's, it's a different question, but just make sure you ask these questions. And what you gain out with this one is they will tell it will give you a little bit insight of the, how the business is, how how they look after the employee, how they make sure they you know the junior guys or girls um, um, have a career path or they have this you know space. Just gives you a little bit insight into how they work. This is my favorite because I'm a technical person. I'm coming in today. I want to resolve problems for this. What, if, if they interfere in something, there's either two things. Either the business grow and they need more people 
or someone left. Those are, those are the two things. There's a need for you to be there. So find out what that need is. If um, sometimes what might happen is a new person comes in and, and he just wants to dismantle the whole team and, and, and you know, um, and create his own team. Um, that might work to your advantage, but just trying to figure out what what is it that they actually, why is it, why is it you're getting into you? Why is it they need it, someone else? Um, check things like um, Glassdoor, if the high staff turn up uh, over, if they, if, if people are living left, right, center in that place, probably not the right place for you to go. Ask who's excelling in this role and why. What will that give you? And I always ask it this question is a little bit insight into someone who's working in that role and what is it that managers or the people that interview you, they like about this person. If it's more about the personality of that person, you can't really compete with that because of your individual. Um, if they are, if it's more of a, their work ethic or how they do things, then you can do something about it. So just have a little bit inside what that manager is like, um, um, because to having a good manager or a good leader is more important than probably having um, a role where you constantly uh, fight in a a battle. Okay, so uh, now that you've done um, the interview um, and hopefully you got the job, um, what is it you should do to stay in the job? Because it's, it's as, as important as getting a job is nothing if you don't really stay in there and you don't progress. And to be honest, if you pick up the wrong for, um, job and you don't stay long enough and stuff like that, it could damage your sort of reputation and your sort of um, gain a next job. So it's really important, really, really important that even if you don't really like the job, you stick around for a while, especially your first couple of roles. Okay, so to, to progress, be good at what you do so they can't ignore you. I think I read this quote in a book somewhere. Um, so if you're good at what you do, they simply cannot ignore you unless the unless unless it's quite a few things which like the company doesn't have somewhere to you know to pro work the role that you can progress into that kind of stuff um, i'm gonna cover that inshallah in a couple of slides down i think so be, be good at what you do what you're in control is yourself not the business um so make sure you're ready um learn inside out what you need to do Focus on growth, not on promotion. Um, this is it's a little bit um, contradiction from my part because a couple of slides back I show you that you should always go after the person that's above you, the person that you would like to take the job. Um, this is the reason I would focus on not chasing promotion is if you constantly on people's face and saying, "Oh, I should get promoted this year," I should. Get, that doesn't work well with people. So you make sure you organically grow and in terms of communicating your ambition all the time, but you're not on people's faces because that's not gonna work for you. And, and in fact, when I was managing teams, that is not something I really enjoyed. Um, I, in today's world, you need to have some emotional intelligence. Um, and I will explain what, what I mean by that. Um, Emotional intelligence means having a self-awareness, so knowing your skill set, knowing what trigger you, what sort of will annoy you, um, knowing when to take yourself out from situations, knowing when someone has really had a bad day and you just have to step back and not sh make sure you don't really um, um, say something that will trigger more um, self-regulation in terms of like you know controlling yourself that you. I and mean, it, it, IT is a very, very, unfortunately, it's very male dominated. There's a lot of alpha male, there's a lot of um, egos. Um, one of the biggest challenges I faced in my career is I was in an organization where I went from the service desk to the architecture team. So the guys that I was sending their password three years ago, two and a half years ago, I was then now with their beers. I was sitting next to them in a meeting. How are they going to accept someone that used to set their password? Um, that is the same level as them you know you, i had to fight battles you know i had to i had to make sure i put them in their places a couple of times to make sure they notice that i know what i'm doing um and this you have to do with intelligence you have to do with you know um make sure you don't just try and uh, try and you know annoy people and because you're going to need those people 
have a motivation, self-motivation, make sure you always um, always motivated and doing things. And IT, unfortunately, sometimes you have to do things outside your limits just to just to get yourself noticed, really. Have empathy. Um, that's really important, um, really, really important. And that the world today is in a way that you can't really be a frank with people and, and say how you really want to say. You have to go around. The, and the higher you go the ladder, the more difficult it is and more you have to learn the skill because everything I deal with is either um, very senior people. So you have to make sure you have it, emotional intelligence in a sense that you, 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 you tailor your message, you tailor your message to individuals. Obviously, you should treat people always the same, but, you know, Claire from, um, from reception and the CEO don't have the same needs. So you need to have, you need to have the intelligence to understand, um, to differentiate those two. And that's what social skills, that's where social skills comes in as well. Have a good, you know, be good to people, they'll be good to you. Um, skills of a salary. Um, I am a great believer, and I was, this is something I talked to the Mahalin a couple of times, is I'm a great believer, if you acquire the enough skills, um, you will earn the money um, over the time. It might not be straight away. Um, so always focus on having the skills. The skills are more important than the salary. There's at times I had to take pay cut to get into the uh, jobs to to make sure I've learned a certain particular skills. So every not everybody, um, you know, sees the same way as I see it. But in my personal opinion, in IT particularly, if you have the skill set, you will earn a good salary. And so make sure you have enough skills. That's what I'm going at. Promote your achievements and ambitions. But again, make sure you don't come across an arrogant or you don't come across as a, someone who's, you know, love to hear what they have to say. Um, be a leader and trusted. Be a leader means, it doesn't mean be, be a manager or be a, um, a someone who leads the team. Um, uh, Everybody is a leader in different ways. You know, what I mean by this is um, situation arises, something happens, um, you're dealing with it. You know, communicate clearly what you're doing, C communicate with um, with other people what, what, what the problem is. Um, have that emotional intelligence that we talked about earlier. Um, make sure you're when when someone passes something to you or project of a task, you take a control of that and you deal with to your best your ability. And that's really important. That's what I mean by being a leader. And that's where the trust comes in. And from my experience, if pe if you do enough good, if you get a good reputation, life is about perceptions. If you do enough um, good work, it will give you a little bit leeway when you when you screw up. There's been a situation to where I absolutely messed up something, and people were like, "Okay, that's Abdiya. We know he's, he's you know he's, he's really good at what he does, and you know usually he produces a good work, um, but because of one mistake, we're not going to tarnish him. We're not going to, you know, I'm just going to leave it there. So what I'm getting at here is earn the trust of people in terms of producing a quality work every single time you've been asked to do something. So that's what, the, those are the key points that I, in my opinion, you should um, keep in, you know, do in order to progress within IT and, and probably applies to other sectors as well. Um, I think we've got a couple of um, more slides. I'm, I'm sure um, you guys are getting bored of me talking. A um, couple of don'ts and do's and don'ts, sorry. Um, so a couple of do's, inshallah, we'll go for it. So don't think you're an imposter. Don't think you belong there. So when you get a job, don't think that you they're doing you a favor, especially if this happens when you're a junior. You're thinking everybody else is doing you a favor. No, you're there. You belong to there. So you need to show... You need to accept and and you know um, authority. You need to show that you're there on merit. You 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 know you're good enough to be there. Um, and some this is something I I when I get especially when I got promoted within a teams I initially struggled with. It took me a little bit of time to learn this. Um, so always 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 um, remember nobody's doing you a favor. You're there to, as on merit. Get involved get involved that's really important whether that's the team um, dynamics you know banter whatever it might be obviously make sure it's not your expense 
um, get involved in terms of projects. Um, maybe some of the little social stuff that they do um, always involves, you know, alcohol and things that you're not really, we're not, we have no business with. So be careful on that. Um, you don't say yes to everything that comes in your way because otherwise you find your position, yourself in a in a situation that you don't want to be in. Promote your work. Um, I you know I'm, you probably can see the theme. I say this quite a few times. Be a team player. You see this every single job description or every single person talks about this what does this mean in practice what does this mean on the real world what it means is if adam in your team messes up something and you got a call from your exec or your director you need to make sure you resolve that problem in a way that adam doesn't get in trouble because one day adam is gonna you're gonna be in the same position you come you you know you beat you it's like a football team. Those of you who understand football, you know, if your left back's not doing their job, your right, you know, your right back's not going to, uh, you know, you, it, it doesn't matter if your right back's playing well, you're still going to concede. So make sure you always be a team player, always have a back of your, um, you know, colleagues. Make, make sure that you're always um, honest. You don't back chat people, that kind of stuff. Um, learn outside the job we talked about this already some of those things are really going to be i'm repeating myself but obviously they apply in a different scenario again stand up for yourself um i, I mentioned already um this could be do and don't um, um and we're probably going to cover this later um make sure you speak up for yourself when when because people will blame you they will pin stuff on you that you haven't done and Make sure you cover, you know, stand up for yourself. Number, it's, someone actually told me, well, like my second day or whatever it was, um, always cover your back. Um, make sure someone doesn't ask you, um, you know, do something that you don't want to do. Because think about in IT, in one click, you can bring down the whole company. And I've seen the people that have done that. Um, so always cover your back. If someone is asking you to do something, tell them to put in an email on a ticket or something. So especially when you're on the front line, a lot of people call you, can I have access to someone else's emails? Can I have access to someone um, accounts? No, there's a procedures in place you have to follow. I have to uh, deal with, uh, you know, executive that's telling me to do something on my first year in IT and I say to them, no, and actually that worked to my advantage because they really appreciate that I stood my ground and, you know, let them do what they really wanted to do, which was not allowed within the defined rules and, and policies that's supposed to say don't but never mind so stay away from politics um, where it's possible um, make sure you don't really burn bridges because it, it doesn't really help it will never especially when you're going to interviews and they ask you why you're leaving your current role even if you hate everybody in your old place don't ever ever back mouth just make sure you just stay professional just come out with this enough excuses in the world that you could use just come out with something else that's applausible um so don't burn bridges because it's a small it's a small well you know um don't ask the same question again i think brad and brad talked about this last week <laughs> nothing not there's nothing it person hates or technical guy or girl hates someone asking the same question over and over again take your notes make sure when you're asking people help me is not a question go there with with a clear plan of what you want to ask yeah this is the the one i was saying stand up for yourself so i seen not me with personally um but i seen it with other um you know sort of a minority people that actually this has happened to you and they sort of tarnish their reputation in the organization because when they stand up for themselves they generally they're loud and then they just come across as a confrontational rather than standing up for themselves so yeah so don't don't play into the stereotype um couple of challenges so you could do all the stuff that i talked about in the last two um pages um and still not um progress in the team so in there's some of the stuff that could be outside your control that could happen it's a silo team so you might have a network team and storage team and compute team that don't talk to each other and they communicate by email that's not a good position for you to be especially if you're junior uh, lack of opportunity in organization sometimes it just happens sometimes you're the only there's no there, there, there's your you and your manager and there's nothing else um, 
or that is not even a manager. So there's nothing else you can do. Team and company culture, sometimes the culture of the company or the team or the management or the leadership, they just don't promote within or they just don't give people an opportunity. That's not your, that's not your really, your fault. You still do all the stuff that we talked about. But this is the one I leave for jobs. <laughs> this is this is the only one that out of the stuff I'm telling you in the challenge section that I actually left the companies because if you're dealing with a poor technology stack, um, then you're going to just be left behind. You're going to become unemployable in three years down the line. So, you know, use your intelligence to work out what to do next. Um, poor leadership, it doesn't help. Uh, lack of focus, if you lose focus, this is, this is one thing out of those out of those um, six bullet points down the screen, this is the, the last one is when you have a control over it. You know, the rest is, is outside your control. Make sure you don't lose focus. Make sure you stay on, keep, keep, keep yourself um, up to date with technologies and, and, and systems. Um, I think that's the end of it, Marlin. Um, I know I waffled along. Um, if Thank you so much, everybody, for listening. And if there's a question, then we can. I was hoping this to be done in 30 minutes. OK. Bismillah uh, ar-Rahim. Runti, it was amazing and informative and beneficial uh, talk. Runti, all of us, we enjoyed. Even I did not feel the time. Uh, it was maybe one hour or maybe more than one hour. But it was, mashallah, great. Uh, Abdul Rahman. Uh, add the ad, uh, thank you. The efforts and the welcome, I can say. And we can see from here you are a good speaker, you are a motivator, and you can inspire people, mashallah. So that's another role for you, Abdul Rahman, in the future. And few, معناها points, Abdul Rahman or Hussein, had done so far to meet Kamila. IT Runti were one of the hot معناها topics at the moment. And Abdul Rahman, who had the Runti. All Islam schools, all volunteer schools that are mentored are valid and are important. But I will take three of them, or an Obahana just to emphasize. One of them in IT, always you have to develop yourself. It's not like something you learned about a year ago, or two years ago, or five years ago. Yeah? Day in, day out, week in, week out, year in, year out, you have to learn. You have to learn every single day. And Marka Adu Kamanta Afirisi, Manaha Hita, the research is a dark sun, Manaha, the typical education Kuba Legaso would be, or Hofki or Jama Abu Tago, degree Ukato, or Yes, Manaha of Man Sovereignty, a Wachtiga Wurda Madi. Wachtig Manta and Jugno Hetai every single day of Kuhanoga Bahai, Yuru Mahbarto. And IT will give you that chance. And that is our own Manaha benefits up to the more you read, the more you learn. And the more you learn, the more you Manaha Muskaha the Ekubai. So you Manaha, you mind and Mufam to your ambition and Wahasuran, Runti Adia the Ukubayan. So Uka the advantage. And again in IT, the more skills you learn, the more you increase your income and your position will go a high and high. So it's advantage for you. And there are different ways to learn anyway. And stage by Gary, sir, or So that's one point to me. Another point to so hey, IT every single day, troubleshooting. You face issue and you have to fix. And that's the IT So always you look for issues. You develop applications. Maybe you design a network, you implement that design, there will be problems, you have to fix them. So always skills come out of a troubleshooter, in a the issue we skills and even it helps you and another point or and always you have to read the JD, uh, the job description. And that's why I say to the students, uh, the spec, always read the job spec. Yeah? And just to Google on YouTube. Yeah? So you're already familiar with the points and 
And believe me, if you take my job spec and ask a Kafka Hayesi Shakada, Manaha they cannot answer all questions Kudigan Mesha. They cannot explain all terms of Mesha Kudigan. So how often in Hadaru Hara Karaban Akoni in a end of story. Yeah? So you can learn and be familiar with the main concept and then apply that job and inshallah ta'ala one day what he said. Another point on Nima or Runtu Fusab Rahman Huha and what two way system. This is the first host of the 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 host معناها بحي باهي وقبان أقوان تاذا يكرتي ذاذا إيو معناها خبرة ذاذا سو وانا صدي سوقات ذا كرة سوقات ذا وقد فهمت إن آتيهين لبا معناها قفوت أما لبا تيم وإسوباها إنا يوضا شخيستان وإيوح وضا خبصة ذان مركة تامس كحلا آقل يسيد علا يسبرن وقوها يا وكا دقايا because always I see students معناها إسكا دقايا إن إيو حو بها يهين أو إن حوغا عبسي إيكو جلتو أو معناها آمسان ما يبي شقلا مه أو معناها أن سن قفك أي أبا هنيه كمبني أنا سن هاي ناو هذه مد ما يوكلها هو كلها ليس that's fine معناها كيف جاونا دجا كيف هالسوليجين yeah and don't stop ما ننت لقاء أتكاله وما ننت جف أبا سمي سد هذا هذا داس أنف معناها I'm not gonna apply another job ما ننت لقاء أتكاله وما ننت يلا لكن هذا هو ده كل سعته one day معناها هو حد هالليس شقده كوجا بون أنت أسمع عن هاو حد جاي أهاب نسين قف أنتو شغالين بلابي وذي جوكتي أو ماركين ده مشغل عنه وذي ماركين معناه قفل بقى الشقراء دي at the end of the day they'll get a job yeah لكن هو حاركي a lot of people أو شقراء دين بلابي لكن ما في إير أي ودين كعادي سي أو سكداي so هنقول قف كنا عصو كلا رنتي دب عذها ودب عذها دت كأن جوليسن إليه إن أجيف أب إسمايان أو أي جوجيان معناه هذا جرني أي بلابين وهذا نوح كلا إسكو قادن أنا أقول يا عم ما المتى جيس هذا صاد دب عذا كلا جت so don't be point here that we should say are they mean within another point on him ah when I don't be an imposter and I have a look of or quite okay ah or mesh and commit the hand yes you are part of the team you are one of them and can you tell the world behind me so if I have not I have to be the team care or her for DC a phone to say don't you add the ad a logo by a and another point on him or so hey to hey we have to start in the room behind me yeah and تاو حركة وضع واحد هاي سكيلز كالله ذا هاي حرفة الله ذا هاي هل نقطة حرفة أن نجاه لينين ذات كمش الجوجا إيه ولا لا يه أو ما تاو حمقن محمد أما حسن أما 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 حليم أما فاضم معناها صارت هو محي because غفك سكيلز كقولة هاي حرفة قولة هاي ولا بها هاي هذه اللي بعتقي العضو هذه اللي بعده project معناها input كده هذا بهم وياه هاي تانو حكوا معنا سوا واحد هاي to develop and معناها gain the right skills or ملك الشقادة لوجه بعيني هاي. so all بونتيو هذا هو حسي جل عبد الرحمن هذه هذا يقوم هذا سنة هاي رونتيو وبونتيو the man taught إن أن قارنه أو أن فهمنه أو أن لكن قلنا إيه مهم وتحي.